So the last one question, why don't we take this? Yeah, so I realized my mistake on why I didn't later. Okay, so I made an assumption in my calculation. So after queen, queen takes d4, uh, <clears throat> so queen takes d4, I calculated knight takes e4, queen takes e4, bishop takes c3, and what I, I don't know why, but I thought that then I have to take back b takes c3, queen takes c3, and I'm forked, uh, and I lose the rook. And I realized after I saw the engine analysis that I, I just don't have to take <laughs> on b3 with the pawn. C3, um, yes. On c3, c3. And that yeah. was my mistake, was that I thought I had to take. Now, That's there are two, two things here at play, Daniel. The one that you already said that uh, the engine pointed out to you, that we're not playing checkers, so capture is not compulsory. And so king right. f1 and you are alive. But there is another p very peculiar thing that I really would like to highlight here that is so typical um, on club level calculation. You calculated out this line for me beautifully with knight e4, queen d4, knight e4, queen e4, bishop c3, p c3, queen c3, let's say king f2 for argument's sake, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then queen a1, and your conclusion was that I'm losing the rock. And with that half sentence there spoken, I hazard a guess that in your head right now, after queen takes a1, you are a rook down, correct or wrong? As in, is my uh, assumption correct? Your assumption is correct. Right. You are an exchange down, Daniel. So as a matter of fact, in that line that you just calculated out to perfection, you lost less material than by doing this. Right. And this is very, very, very common. That people mm. lose a biggie, like one of the big boys, and their brain immediately switches to, <laughs> I lost the rook, here I lose a knight, da da. Whereas the reality, and I'm going to play it out for you now, they lost two minor pieces, Daniel. Knight e4 was a piece sack. Mm -hmm. So black right. loses a piece here. They don't gain the piece back. We trade it, and then they take a rock. You are an exchange down. Mm -hmm. And for all intents and purposes and practical chances, you have a heck of a lot better go at winning this or turning this position around than casually playing castles here and just go like, well, I lost a piece. And I tell you the reason for that too, by the way, is because now there is no dark squared bishop. You have one. Right. Which right. is going to give rise to tactical ideas. I will show you one. There was a very famous Gaprindashvili game I can't remember the life for the life of me who against she played it, where she played in a position like this bishop e4. Actually, no, I will show you the tactic. So let's say here, she played bishop e3, allowing the other rook to be captured. She played mm. queen f6 and bishop d4 and mate was unstoppable. Mm. Now, I'm not saying it is unstoppable here, but it's bloody close. I mean, bishop d5 probably puts a dent in this, but I just wanted to show you the motive. And even if that doesn't work, by the way, you can just play here rook anywhere at all and then put your bishop on the long diagonal and hope for the best. That's all right. you have. Like, you are dead lost. But yeah. practically, and the practical chances you have in a position like this are infinitely higher than you just not retaking on a piece like that. You have zero yeah. practical chances here, none whatsoever. I would say that a 300 rated lower prior than you would comfortably beat you from this position 85 out of 100 games. Yeah. If I give you this, uh, I would say, where is my line? Where did my line go? Oh, I think here. Yeah, here it is. I would say that from this position with you to move, if you played against 300 rated lower dudes than you are, you would win at least half of them from here. Mm -hmm. But uh, that is, there are two thing, two parts to this. One is the actual calculation, uh, which is that you realize that you did not lose a rock. And by the way, for that reason, exactly what I just told you here, I very strongly advise against such statements because it's vastly inaccurate. We took a lot of pieces, right? So. We are not interested in, 
a, a piece being captured in a sequence. We are interested in what's the overall material balance. Yeah. Right? Yep. And so right. when you said I lost a rook, I immediately went like, mm, he thinks he's a rook down. He isn't. So it's yep. very important to evaluate this and it looks hopeless, right? But you have to calculate it because as soon as you realize that it's actually only an exchange down, all of a sudden it's not as hopeless. Right. And I have the bishop here. Oh, and like I said, the, the, the key factor here is the dark squared bishop versus a vulnerable king. Yeah. Now the irony, Daniel, is, is that it's perfectly possible that I turn on the engine on this and it will tell you that it's far more winning for black than this is. Mm -hmm. And that's a hugely irrelevant factor in this case because mm -hmm. of the human factor that I told you. That this is not really something that humans will mess up because it's a clean, easy position to play. There is not really a lot of room for black to go fundamentally spectacularly wrong. On the other hand, this is total chaos. <laughs> this is where humans make mistakes when they get nervous about this bishop getting powerful where we have this trickery that I showed you before where it's yeah. not clear how to finish it off mm -hmm. when the king is feeling a bit vulnerable yep so this is uh, very important that uh, yeah, we calculate this correctly and I will spare you from the rest 